Hello and welcome. My name is Niklas Kimiri. I work at Roskilde University in Denmark. And uh, as you can see, it's a bit gray here in Copenhagen. So the light is not optimal, even though it's uh, middle of the day. But I hope you can nevertheless uh, follow along and I'm happy you tuned in to my talk, which I entitled From Caretaking to te and Teaching to Mutually Caring Communication. So uh, this is a talk that in a way takes a point of departure in the empirical work that I've been doing throughout these past 10 years or so in daycare institutions in Germany and Denmark, um, basically mostly following or participating in the everyday life of children, trying to find out what technology means to them and uh, yeah, and what role technology is playing and could play basically in the daycare institutions um, and in the everyday life and in the interrelations in a way between pedagogues or ECEC teachers, maybe the parents and the children. So, uh, so I'm gonna depart from this empirical uh, yeah, interest in a way and some of the experiences I've made to talk about then the concepts of caretaking, teaching, and trying to expand them in a way to for them to become maybe more two-sided in order to also understand better what the role of technology and digitalization could be in the future in order to create sort of more democratic uh, institutions and societies. So I'm very happy to be able to give this talk here at the Early Childhood Voice Conference and I hope uh, I can contribute to the overall topic of it. So as announced, uh, the first thing I would like to, in a way, shortly introduce into is um, yeah, the empirical point of departure, my interest. Um, and uh, here I could uh, take a point of departure, especially in the purposes of digitalizing daycare institutions, um, which are manifold and ambivalent. Um, and it depends basically on whom one asks and what the purposes could be. But some that uh, many would agree on, at least the adults I've been talking to, is that uh, the main, or one of the main purposes, of course, the promotion of children's learning and especially of children's digital learning. But here, learning gets very, um, specific characteristic in a way learning as as, an, as a form of instructing uh, as a form of sort of goal-oriented learning where the adult is very clear about what the child is to learn in order to become for instance more school ready also more job ready and so forth so this is uh, this picture is just an, an example of uh, an IT pedagogue visiting one of the uh, daycare institutions in uh, the municipality he's working for and where he is basically preparing um, yeah something for, for showing the children how to program a bee robot to walk through these rectangles that you can see on the ground. So here in a way is sort of the goal orientedness um, of, of learning uh, becomes very evident um, yeah, by defining basically the goal of where the bee is to head. And uh, that is in a way for me an analogy also of this kind of thinking learning. The criticism of this, uh, especially in terms of daycare institutions, has been raised by many uh, parts of many different uh, researchers, colleagues, but uh, I'm here sort of highlighting uh, one of Marianne Hillegor's um, quotes about play materials or what technology in the broadest sense maybe is to do in a daycare. And maybe it's not so much about teaching formalized functions, um, but rather that educational materials should motivate children to enter new social situations and give them conceptual tools to explore these. So rather open up uh, then we're closing down uh, and thinking very goal-directed uh, ways of learning um, yeah, and instruction. So this is one of the purposes of digitalizing daycare that is often uttered. Another one is the communication with parents um, and uh, yeah, ideally this should be dialogical but uh, what I've experienced mostly it's very monological in the sense that uh, the pedagogues, the ECEC teachers are basically giving information about what's happening at the daycare, uh, telling parents what for instance or to bring for the next day when there's excursions planned and so forth, so practical uh, reasons, but also to give the parents an insight into what's happening in the daycare, like a little update uh, of stories and so forth, what's happened in the daycare. And that can invite for dialogue, um, but sometimes it just remains basically this I send you a message about what the child experienced and then that's that. So not necessarily an invitation for dialogue, um, depending on how one relates basically to this, to this technology. 
Third purpose, uh, not the least, is one of uh, administration. And for instance, attendance is administered uh, digitally or can be administered digitally, but also yeah, use of basic uh, resources, food, diapers, and so forth. And I would say and claim that there's a very specific also notion of caretaking involved here where, well, um, caretaking becomes basically providing yeah, basic provisions, resources for the children and not necessarily much more uh, than that. At least that's kind of what data can be collected on, what can be controlled and predicted. So um, so maybe a very one-sided notion of caretaking ingrained in this administrative way of thinking, um, also digital technology. I myself, when now maybe also listen, or talking about uh, these purposes already in a slightly critical light, um, yeah, I'm coming from a theoretical, theoretical perspective that uh, one could call social material critical psychology of technology. Uh, it's a long word, but uh, it yeah, has a tradition of at least around, what well, one could say, uh, 40, 50 years, and uh, has been developed especially in Germany and Denmark, but also has very connection points to uh, cultural historical activity theory, for instance, Mariana Hillegor's work, but uh, because there's also a fellow well, rooting in, in uh, Leontjev's work and also Vygotsky's work. But anyway, what's important here is that um, these more one-sided understandings of learning and care that may be promoted through digitalization of daycare uh, seem to be problematic from this theoretical point of view, because agency uh, is something that is very much valued and is more understood as something relational, as participation in the co-creation of social material conditions. So it's not only about the children, the single child learning something specific, but it's about developing basic agency and influence on the world and co-creating of the world's conditions by participating in social practice. The same goes for development, developing new forms of taking part in co-creation. And this means also that learning is understood as mutual. Uh, it's not something that only pertains to the single individual, to the child, but it's something that happens uh, together um, in yeah, social communities, basically. Um, communities of practice where conflictual collab collaboration uh, takes place and where one develops knowledge and agency together across age and uh, across any other kind of difference, which doesn't mean that it enables uniqueness, but it means that somehow everybody contributes to this fellow learning across uh, people. And the ethos that is expressed in this uh, well way of thinking, uh, which is called co-research basically where one co-researches well together with others I have uh, termed a caring and democratic psychological approach and I think this is kind of what I want to promote also here today that maybe by thinking learning and caretaking or caring differently um, in a way we can also come to understand better what uh, technology can be used for and what digitalization can be used for in daycare institutions. The funny thing is that in a way when uh, thinking this, theoretically, it sounds very complex, but in a way, that's very much already what I find, in a way, done in early childhood education and care institutions, namely that teachers there don't think themselves only as teachers, but they think themselves actually as a way of professionalized learners and also mediators who are very aware that they need to learn from the children and from colleagues and from parents and so forth in order to teach in sensible and meaningful ways. And, uh, and this is something that uh, is not yeah, question so much, it's about really doing it, it's, it's embodied in a way uh, as an ethos and also that one needs to mediate in a way children's knowledge but also one's own knowledge in order to create sort of uh, yeah, learning environments where it's possible for each and every one to contribute in meaningful ways so that children, well, one can pick up on the children's everyday experiences and, and develop learning from that point of departure. But it also means that uh, the teacher, he himself or herself has to um, develop and learn so that the positions between teacher and learner become fluid and that both the what and how in a way becomes uh, content of, of this fellow learning. So how can we in a way develop knowledge together um, in this institution? And uh, I'd say that this is something that I found very much present in uh, many of the pedagogues everyday doings, at least as long as they don't think learning in a one-sided way once they employ for instance the specific kinds of technologies and materials 
that in a way prompt this form of very formalist thinking uh, learning, uh, very goal-directed learning. So um, yeah, so in a way that's already something found. And again, sort of back to also saying that, well, maybe research should also uh, take a bigger point of departure in these everyday understandings in a way of, of teaching as learning, as also mutual learning. Uh, because uh, what is maybe missing even, well, almost a hundred years after we got to be wrote this year, but uh, that, that there's still research missing on the positive characteristics of the children, how they contribute with their unique subjectivities to, in a way, the fellow learning and also the fellow development of democratic institutions and democratic society. Um, so that's something that I think Vygotsky has been very much also um, yeah, writing for, in a way. Um, I said around already 100 years ago or 90 years ago. I said, this is something that, uh, however, one could say is maybe a problem in research in a way in, in uh, pedagogical practice, this is happening. But at the same time, it's also something that becomes less and less valued that in a way teachers are also learners. And that is something this devaluing of it, uh, I think has to do again also, or is at least catalyzed or maybe stabilized by digitalization of daycare and a specific understanding of technology. This is just an example of uh, how actually this uh, yeah, teaching learning, this fluidity in a way is taking place and also it's fluid across analog and digital um, devices or materials that are being used. And it's a theatrical play where actually they involved uh, yeah, over three months, all the children and pedagogues of the preschool classes basically were involved uh, in developing this, uh, creating a storyline together, um, and also creating a lot of both uh, analog and digital material together, um, making photos, for instance, of the environment around the daycare, and then having it as a background, and then having the IT pedagogue help them to clip into uh, yeah, these background photos and animations of a dragon, for instance, but they've also created their costumes together with the parents. They created like a real dragon egg, for instance, and, and many other things where sort of you have digital backgrounds and also sounds and music, so forth played into the theatrical play um, that combines this with the analog and what's going on on stage. But all this project uh, and thinking technology is also more fluid in a way uh, and thinking of digital and analog together opened up for different kinds of exploration across perspectives where learning becomes sort of very central where it's not so much about instructing the children how to do things, but more, yeah, engaging children in a fellow learning process where the pedagogues are just as much uh, basically learners uh, as the children are. And I would say that actually also uh, yeah, means that in a way, by accepting that children are also teaching something valuable uh, about their everyday life, about their environment, learning about also the culture that the institution is a part of and so forth, they are also exerting a form of care actually for the pedagogues, I would say, because uh, pedagogues also, or ECEC teachers, they are of course also uh, gaining from having sort of taken care of by the children. And, and being accepted as fellow human beings. I mean, that is something uh, I would say that many pedagogues are often expressing that it's very important for them in a way to be also acknowledged by the children, not only as a so-called authority figure, but as a fellow human being, somebody who has something valuable to contribute to their everyday life. Um, and that doesn't necessarily, it's not only verbal communication that is important here, but very much a lot of nonverbal communication that of course, goes into this form of expressing also a kind of a connectedness between uh, the children, the pedagogues, and as I said, all the other people around. Um, I cannot go so much into detail with this slide, but I want, I want to say is that this form of thinking, learning as two-sided, as mutual, as something mm, collaborative, opens up for thinking also care differently. Um, or I would say that um, what John Toronto has, has uh, written about in her version of thinking care and caring with especially, and I will just sort of highlight this, um, very much goes into the direction of what I think has to do with, with uh, helping one another learn about the world and, uh, and to make sure 
that we know that there's other people who want to learn from us, that we can contribute with something valuable, that we can produce also trust and solidarity that makes it possible for us to have like a, a, a base from which we can explore world uh, on our own sometimes, but especially uh, together. Um, and this form of care is also very much present, I would say, in many of the daycare institutions I've met, but it's very difficult to talk about it and to see also how this is, for instance, represented in the technologies that are being used and introduced uh, in, in terms of the digitalization of daycare. So for me, sort of this caring with has to do with learning with in a way. And this is kind of what I want to end this talk with. And I know this has been a lot of content, but I'm trying to wrap it up by saying that for me, sort of a new notion of learning with um, can make it possible to think also caring with differently and communication through technology differently. So technology in this sense becomes like an opener for getting into a new form of collaborating with one another, where caring with and learning with are sort of interconnected, where uh, materials in a way are not something that are being used in order to instruct somebody else, but to open up for fellow inquiry and investigation of where can we uh, head together uh, in terms of the institution that provides basically the space where we can yeah, spend time together and develop together um, through different means and through different perspectives with each our unique subjectivity. But it's very important, especially in the way that we have arranged institutions for children and also technologies that children often are not necessarily acknowledged as contributors here. And this is the first step in a way that children must be acknowledged as contributors, as fellow citizens, as, as co-conceptualizers of everyday life and what is relevant in everyday life. And uh, just to sort of come with a big new word that uh, I think this is at least the best I could come up with, uh, teleogenetic collaboration that we in a way explore, communicate and caringly co-decide on where our child adult uh, and the times very conflictual collaborations will take us given our different perceptions and knowledges of technology in the world. And as I said, for me, this collaboration entails uh, every kind of uh, people irrespective of age and other kinds of differences. And instead of telegenetic collaboration, one could maybe also say it's a mutually caring communication about the meaningfulness of technology, but not only of technology, actually of all that which we create together as human beings in the world that we inhabit uh, together and create together. So this is my final words. Thank you very much for uh, yeah, communicating with me. And uh, please do take the opportunity to write me a mail in case you want to uh, discuss, debate, or have any questions that uh, you would like to follow up on. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in. This is also the reference list, just in case you're interested. And yeah, please enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks a lot to the organizers and have a wonderful day. And I will just stop the recording now. Bye-bye.